Dan Schmeising misses the pull-off by just a fraction. Two men will pull off to this point, Richard Poppin and Wayne Sullivan. Now will this man, Ron Headley, up on board Betty's Headache, will he add his name to that list in the pull-off? Well, this big man from Fairfield, Iowa, is as good a tractor puller as there is on the TNT circuit. The tractor is called Betty's Headache. It's powered by two Keith Black Hemi engines, much like you'd find in the alcohol classics in NHRA drag racing, and making about the same horsepower as those engines. And you can see the red butterflies in the fuel injectors. You saw them start to come open as he carefully fed the power into it. You can bet they're wide open now. Look at this, Ron Headley. Betty's Headache, he's got the momentum. Will the box stop it? Nothing stops him. And look at the cushion ball. He took it out. Boy, an absolutely great run right down the center of the course. His experience helps him get right down the middle. He ran that tractor right where he wanted it, apparently taking advantage of being able to watch the runs going before him. The machine here is the orange truck. That's David Boning on board. He's seen this run in front of him. He's got to be thinking, whoa, it is really a tough competition tonight. So now, Ron Headley joins the pull-off along with Popham and Sullivan. Let's go to Steve. Well, for Betty's headache, Paul, you spell relief, F-U-L-L-P-U-L-L. -L -L. Great job, right out the back. Strongest run of the night. Thank you, it felt pretty good. No, you ran away with this class last year. You're picking right up where you left off. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Did you pick it up where you left off last year? I'm trying to. It's pretty hard sledding out there for everybody. Tough competition here tonight. Was it horsepower for you? Your success strictly horsepower? Yeah, I think, I think it takes a lot of horsepower out here. Spin the wheels faster, you're going to go farther. Okay, one more in the pull-off. A little advice to competitors yet to follow good wheel speed, and you just may find a little happiness of a full pull. There's Ron Hickson. He's up on the sled. They call it the decision maker. And right now, going through his mind is what will he do to that sled when the pull-off comes. Ron Hickson will be a very important player before this day is done. He can add more lead to the box. He can change the gear and the transmission on decision makers so that the box transfers quicker or all the above. And here is yet another driver trying to make that pull-off. This is David Boning on Orange Crush, and he's got good wheel speed. Wheel speed good, but control is just not there for him. As the front end bounces, and every time it slams into the ground, that left traction at the back end. Balance is just terrible, and he comes up way, way short of a full pull. So David Boning will not go into what is already a pull-off. He comes up with 279.71 feet. That's way short of that 295-foot distance that is the full pull distance. And as Steve mentioned, they're going to be deciding what weight and what transfer to put on the sled. As we now take a look at David Boning's run once again, good wheel spin, but you see almost immediately it starts to buck into the air and then slam down. And when that begins to happen, getting control of it once again is extremely difficult. David Boning fighting with the brakes on the rear wheels, trying to get control but just cannot get it done. Now, he's down with Steve. Well, David, you whipped it as hard as you could down this course, but you just can't fight the law of gravity. If the Vernon's light, she's going up. <laughs> yeah, I had a little light on the front. Well, you showed no mercy to the engines trying to make up for it. Do what now? You showed no mercy to the motors trying to make up for it. No, it run good. It just missed the weights a little bit. The track does not seem to be going away. It seems to be staying as tracted as it was. Yeah, it seems to be all right. I believe everybody got a good chance, Eddie. Well, that's good. Okay. Even though I didn't make the pull-off, good attitude. Well, thus far, we are set up for a really excellent pull-off. Three men in it. Richard Poppin, Ron Headley, and Wayne Sullivan, all with a full pull. A tremendous crowd here, and now they begin to sense the excitement because coming up next, the monster trucks as Carolina Crusher pulled courses and stock car tracks and drag strips. But here on the floor of the Astrodome is a very special track constructed of dirt and junk cars, Paul Page. Well, the Astrodome has seen some spectacular motorsports events, the sky jump, a lot of motorcycle and motorcycle bus jumping and truck jumping here. But I don't think any quite as exciting as the monster trucks. When they make their appearance in the arena, the crowd comes to its feet. A tremendous crowd here tonight for the TNT Redman Super National. And this is true competition. The winner goes on, the loser goes back to the truck. Bennett Clark, Powder Springs, Georgia, will be up against this man, Gary Porter. Gary is out of Waitsboro, North Carolina. Gary Porter in the Carolina Crusher. 
That's the crusher right there in the near lane. The far side is Clydesdale to Bennett Clark at the wheel. Now both men sitting right on that starting line looking down at the cars and bumps ahead of them. Both of them off the line nice and even. Clark gets a little bit of advantage on the far side and now the Carolina crusher, Gary Porter at the wheel, gets to the turn. They're coming to the turn even. And this is the trickiest part of the course, but both men execute brilliantly. The Carolina crusher in the near lane, the yellow truck, has the advantage as they come down to the finish line and he bounces to victory. Gary Porter moves on to the round of four. So the first run for the monster trucks complete. Now here was really what seemed to make the difference. It was Gary Porter on the near side got a little better angle on the hairpin turn. So he carried more speed over the first mound. That got him faster to running over the cars and as a result he came home as the winner of this elimination. You know, the secret to your success there, Gary, was coming off the turn straight and getting on the cars straight on the final stretch down to the flag. Yeah, I think most of the races will be won at the final end uh, tonight down there in the turn. Okay, thanks. Good job. See you next round. Yeah, thank you. Hey. So Gary Porter and the Carolina Crusher will move ahead in this elimination ladder of the monster truck. Now there is the flying machine, appropriately named, has a very interesting engine on board. And earlier, Steve Evans got an opportunity to take a look at this flame-breathing monster. This Astrodome crowd will cheer and stomp for every one of the supercharged modified tractors, except for one. They'll ooh and they'll ah, because when the flying machine hooks to the sled, it's the 4th of July. Most of the modified tractors make the old dome sound your local drag strip, not the flying machine. It'll sound more like your local international airport. In the fuel tanks of all the other tractors is racing alcohol. In the fuel tank of the flying machine, it's JP4, jet fuel, kerosene, because the flying machine is powered by a mid-60s helicopter turbine engine, basically stock the way it came out of the sky, hooked to a drive shaft and through a typical tractor rear end. Now, when Bob Soisson decides he wants to put on a little show for the crowd, from the cockpit he injects a little raw kerosene here into the outlet and that's the flame you'll see spurt out of it now the old girl's been around a long time and she's in tough against all of these twin engine tractors but win lose or draw the flying machine always seems to leave the crowd favorite and there he fires a little of that jet a fuel into the exhaust and lights up the astrodome and Robert Sison now lays the power, but the wheel spin just not there right from the start. He's trying valiantly to make up for a lack of power and wheel spin, but he doesn't have the speed at this point of the course already. It's beginning to drag to a stop, so the Lycoming not making the kind of power or speed that he was hoping for, and he is well short of the 295-foot distance, which is the full pull, and which is necessary to make it to the pull-off. So while it's an interesting power plant, in this particular instance, not making the kind of power necessary for the pull. In the meantime, making their appearance over on the monster truck course, Grave Digger and Bigfoot, as they line up for the next elimination. It's a round of eight that the monster trucks are moving through right now. A single ladder bracket, and Bigfoot maneuvers up into the starting position. Now let's go back over to the tractor pull line and Steve. Well, Bob, it was a good deal short of a full pull, but you still, as always, have the fans on their feet. They love the fire and smoke of the turbine. Well, we try our best. We try to on the best show we can for the TNT circuit. We try it every time. I tell you, no one uh, could call anything you do a bad show. Uh, does it have enough power to pull this class, really? Well, it's a little light on power for this class with this big bunch of boys, but it's coming on next year. Everybody enjoys seeing it. It is so unusual. Thank you. 